Today is a lovely summer day. It is the 29th of July 2006. We are in the Martinez Center in Klintz, seven kilometers from Nykøbing, Zealand, on the north coast of Zealand, 100 kilometers from Copenhagen, Denmark. My name is Ole Terkelsen, and I live in Copenhagen, Denmark. And tonight I'm going to give a lecture with the title the Cosmology, the Institute, and the Center. Yes, I would like to talk a little bit about Martinus Cosmology, the Martinus Institute, and the Martinus Center. And um, the basis of it all is um, Martinus' uh, books. He has written, uh, I guess, about uh, 5,000 pages or 8,000 pages. And the basis of his works is that he has uh, had his cosmic consciousness. When Martinus was 30 years old, he had a revelation. He was initiated, or he said that he got cosmic consciousness. And that was a new sense. It was a kind of new perception. He had a very strong intuition. So he could experience the laws of life. So... Um, Martinus, he is not a philosopher. He has not invented his cosmology. He has had the capacity to experience the laws of life and the principles of life directly. So um, he, he was quite humble and said, I have not invented this world picture. The world picture existed before I was born. The cosmical laws, the cosmical principles existed before I was born. But he just had the ability to experience them. He said that he had access to the ocean of knowledge in the universe. He could get all the knowledge he wanted, but he only got the knowledge that he asked for. When he was working with a spiritual problem, he could get the answer, but he didn't get any answers if he had not had a question. And uh, when he was 30 years old, as I said, he got his cosmic consciousness, and then he worked for 60 years writing all his uh, books. In the beginning, he called his works for Martinus Spiritual Science, and later on, he called it Martinus Cosmology. And some 10 years or 5 years before he, he left the physical world, he decided to call his collected works for the Third Testament. And um, everything that Martinus has written, that is a gift to the world. It's a presence, and it belongs to everybody. Martinus, he did not want that there should be some union. He didn't like memberships. There should be no sect about it. He talks about his writings as a spiritual science, and that means science cannot be put into a sect. If it's, uh, if the question is about natural science, you can read the books in the libraries and it's published all over the world. It's accessible for all, for everybody. There is no sect or any union. So that's maybe a little bit extraordinary in, in the spiritual area that there should be no uh, unions. Martinus, um, he's had, uh, he had a certain mission and that was to create this spiritual science. But it was also interesting that there were other things that um, also belonged to his mission. That was to make this institute and to make the center. In one way, it should have been enough that he had written his books, because then there was enough to, to study. Martinus talked about that in earlier times, there had been very highly developed people on this planet Earth. But they had to reincarnate on other planets because at that time there was no cosmical science, there was no spiritual science on the planet Earth. But after that he had finished his works and he said now it is possible to get cosmic consciousness on this planet because he had materialized this uh, cosmical science. He, he said that it was necessary to study these seven volumes, the Leavis book, his main work, in order to get cosmic consciousness. He said that with these seven volumes in Leavis book, it was enough, he has written enough for people to get cosmic consciousness. And then what he wrote after, that was sort of extra. He thinks that before you will experience cosmic science by your own senses, you will get a theoretical understanding about cosmic Consciousness. So you could say in the first place you will get theoretical 
cosmic consciousness. And then in the next place you will get it practical or you will experience the cosmic uh, consciousness by your own, by your own senses. So that was um, the main part of his teaching to write this book and uh, make it accessible to all people in, in, in the world. And in a way that should have been enough. But he also felt that it belonged to his works to create a, a kind of organization. And um, in the first place, he was just writing as a private person. But in 1932, when the first volume of Livis Bo was published, he, he, he made this Martinus Institute. And there was also a, a council or, or a board. And then uh, he was thinking about how to organize his work. And for many years he discussed with the, with, the, with the board or the council how they should organize the work. And then uh, we have a, um, a translator, he translates into uh, Esperanto, Ipsleischer. He said that for 15 years he discussed with Martinus what kind of organization, world organization there should be. And after 15 years Martinus came, now I have the solution. We shall have no world organization. The cosmology it should be totally free. Um, I'm very fond of the international language Esperanto. It was created by Zamenhof, and he said exactly the same thing as Martinus. Esperanto is a gift or pres present to mankind. You can use it if you want to. And if you want to, you can make an Esperanto union. You can teach Esperanto, and you, you, if you don't want to, you, you, you don't have to do it. So in the same way, Martinus cosmology, that is free, that's released. Everybody here on this planet has the right to make study groups, has the right to teach you the cosmology, has the right to make Martinus centers. So I think it's very um, positive that it's, it's so free because there can be a lot of uh, problems. I know, for example, in Copenhagen some several years ago, there was a lot of problems in philosophical society because they have a world organization. And then they told from London or for India, what they had to do in Denmark. And then they said, no, we won't do it that way. We'll do it our own way. And then there was a lot of problems. So from Martino's um, point of view, he could see he would save, he would avoid a lot of problems, just giving it uh, totally free. But uh, he wanted to make uh, an institute and a center where it was cultured, in poor culture, where it was, what it was kept. Some think that he's a kind of sick because he and Martino's center, we only teach Martinus cosmology. And some people can't understand why don't we hear anything about anthroposophy or theosophy or New Age. But it's so simple that if you want to study German, you could go to the Goethe Institute and study German. If you want to study French, you could go to the Alliance Francaise. So, and if you want to dance, you could go to some kind of dancing school. I mean, you can just put the name of your school and that's what you are teaching. And uh, it, it's not because Martinus is intolerant that he's not teaching other spiritual directions. It's just he wanted that there should be at least one place in the whole world where you only was teaching Martinus cosmology. And he wanted the institute to be as little as possible. He wanted that the institute should only do the things that other people couldn't do. Uh, in the first place, the institute had to press the book themselves because... There were so few people who bought the books. But uh, he thought it was better letting book printing companies publish the books because they can do that better than the institute. So the institute should only do the small things that others couldn't do. And the Martinus Institute has um, three purposes, the three points with which the <coughs> institute should work. And that is that the, the um, institute shall keep the work unchanged and see that it is translated uh, in a good way to, to other languages. And then the Institute should publish this um, magazine, Cosmos, in uh, several languages. And thirdly, the Martinus Institute should give lectures and teach. In Copenhagen, that is the administration called the Martinus Institute. And here in, in Klint, near Nykøbing, Zealand, there is this uh, summer school. And it should gradually turn into an international university working all year around. And there, the institute should teach the cosmology. And uh, Martinus' vision was 
that the institute should not send lecturers and missionaries uh, around in the world. The I general idea was that people should come here, could come here from all different countries of the world, and they should be able to stay here and study for one year or two years or several years, and then they could go back to their own countries and teach as much or as, as little as they, they wanted. So he wanted to um, make this into a national university. And he had some visions that he maybe, I don't know how long time, but I think he, he had a vision that this place will, will rest for 2,000 years. So, uh, and so the, 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 uh, will remain, will remain for, for, for 2,000 years. So he said that, that this Martinus Center, it would grow and grow. It would turn into a city, even into a big city. Maybe a little bit like the, a campus, a university in the United States, because there is often a whole city where the teachers and the students and the university is in the same place, and sometimes that's almost a whole city. So Martinus also thought that this center would turn into such a, a whole city in the future where people would come from, from the world. And um, Martinus, uh, when he, he had his first lecture in the lecture hall down there, in 1962, he said in his lecture, the lecture was called, the first lecture was called The Eyes of God. And he talked about the purpose of this Martinez Center. And he said that the purpose of the Martinez Center is to teach people to look upon life with God's eyes. And I think that was quite a quite nice, interesting title. And then, of course, you would ask, how, how does God look on life? But that is uh, already written in the Bible, because God created the world in six days, and um, God, there, there was no lack of self-confidence. God was quite satisfied with himself. He said on the seventh day, see, everything is very good. So that's the way that God is looking upon life. Everything is very good. And this is the purpose of Martinus Center, to teach people to look upon life with God's eyes. So we should gradually become able to see that everything is very good. And everything now is as perfect as it can be. But uh, that does not mean that it cannot become better. But at the present time, it cannot be any better than it is. Martinus is always comparing with the fruit trees and the apples. To have a mature apple that tastes very good, it takes time. And in the meanwhile, there is some stages which is rather unpleasant. It is it's as acidic and it's, it doesn't taste good. But that doesn't mean that it's, uh, it is as perfect as it can be here in July. The apples are, are not ripe in Denmark, but it is as perfect as it can be for the moment being. But it does not mean that it will not become any better. And that's also with the development of the mankind. Mankind is also like an unripe fruit. It is also very as acid and uh, all sometimes with all these terrorism and wars, it looks as if everything is not so good. Um, Martinus called his work for the Third Testament. And um, in the Third Testament, there is some topics or some themes that are treated that are not treated in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And there is a lot of different topics. But I would say there is three important things in the Third Testament that is not uh, present, presented in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And that is that Martinus explained the meaning of the darkness. Martinus has explained the meaning of the sufferings. Because uh, earlier in many religions, people were thinking that God, God was the cause to all good things and the devil was the cause to all bad things. So you divided the world in good things and in bad things. And there are so many religions that have two powers, the God and the devil, things that are good and, and, and what is bad. And of course, there is things that is very unpleasant, but from a cosmical point of view, they are good. All these unpleasant things are needed. And for that reason, Martinus, he had the two no notions. He talked about the unpleasant good and the pleasant good. So that's, that's the, the magic in the cosmology, how Martinus can explain that unpleasant things are good. 
if I should put it very shortly, there are two main arguments. One argument is that from the philosophical point of view, you need contrasts in order to be able to experience life. Without contrast, you cannot experience anything. You would not know that you were happy if you have not been unhappy. So uh, you cannot experience anything if you have not experienced the contrast. You could not appreciate company if you have never experienced loneliness. And uh, sometimes you can also appreciate loneliness because you have had too much family and too much company. So from the philosophical point of view, contrasts are necessary for having a life experience. And in a shorter view, the sufferings is developing. The sufferings are developing us. Whenever you have experienced some sufferings, pains, problems, your feelings are developing. When you have felt the pain yourself, you get compassion. When you have felt the problems on your own body, you can feel with others. And that is also um, turning into turning you into a humane being and you are becoming a loving person because the you should not only look on the sufferings but you should look upon the results of the sufferings and the results of the sufferings that is compassion and neighborly love so from that point of view Martinus can argue for the unpleasant things are good and then are, there are the pleasant good and we have that's easy for us to accept the, the pleasant good but that's a very important thing in the cosmology that Martinus has justified the darkness. He has justified the sufferings and explained that everything is very good. And that was sort of the purpose of the Martinus Center. So that would also really give the people a positive way of thinking when they can see that everything is very good. And Martinus shows that there is no devil, there is no evil powers. He has also this cosmic definition of God. God is everything that exists, and that everything that exists uh, are God. So that's uh, including everything. So um, there can only, only be one cause to all the things in, in the world from that point of view. Otherwise, you ter divide the world into God and devil, and then there are the good powers and the bad powers. But there is only one power, and that's the power of, of the universe. And it is always good, but sometimes it's unpleasant to give out a teaching. But that's so important for people to know when they have got a lot of problems and sufferings. It's so important to know that there is a purpose and it will give a result and that we are transformed from egoistic animals into, into loving, perfect human beings. That was the one thing that was very important in Martinus cosmology. And the second point that is very important, that is that Martinus uh, has written a lot of analysis about the sexual transformation of, the, of human beings, that we are turning into double pole beings. And I guess that is the biggest surprise in the Martinus cosmology, because we know there have been men and women, females and males, there are men and women, female and males, but in the future there shall not be any men and women, but there shall be double pole beings. And I guess that's really a big surprise that a new, and a new sex is coming up, the third, third sex, and that is a double pole sex. So that's really uh, a big surprise. I won't uh, explain so much in, 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 in this lecture, but I guess you will hear quite a lot about it during, during the week in the lectures and in the simple explanations. And thirdly, also, love to microcosmos is a very important area. You are talking so much, much about neighborly love. And then you can ask, who is my neighbor? And normally people think that my neighbor, that is other human beings. But Martinus also explained that uh, the, the animals are our neighbors. And he has written two important books about love, love to microcosmos. And that is the ideal food, where he's uh, writing about vegetarianism and the, also the karmic consequences and the, the consequences for the health when you're eating meat. And Martino says that you are creating your karma or your fate in three important areas. And for the first, it is uh, you create karma in your relationship with other human beings. And you create karma in your relationship with the animals. And there are some people, they are very nice, to other people, and they are very nice to the animals. But anyway, they are 
sick and ill and have big problems. And that is because they have not been practicing neighborly love to the third very important area, and that is to practice love to the um, microcosmos. And he has written about that in the book The Ideal Food, and also in a book called Funeral or Sepultures, but it has not been translated into into uh, English yet. But uh, that was the first two books he wrote after Leavitt's book one, one. When he has published the first volume, he started to explain that about love to microcosmos. But it also includes that you have to treat your microcosmos well in two uh, important areas. And one is in the physical way. He, he explained that the organs are individuals, they are living beings. All the cells are individual living beings. The molecules and the atoms are living beings. So when you are drinking alcohol or smoking tobacco, you are intoxicating these living beings. It's bad for people to work in a chemical industry where there's a lot of pollution and it's not good for the health. Poor people who are forced to, to work in such a place. But in a way, we are forcing our lungs and cells to work in such a place when we are smoking ourselves or drinking alcohol or taking narcotic uh, 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 stuffs. So it's uh, very important to have a healthy diet and, 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 and to drink and uh, eat in a healthy way because that is also practicing neighborly love to the microcosmos. But also the thinking is very, very important because our thoughts has a very big influence on the life of our micro-individuals. And when we have a negative thinking, for example, bitterness, that is very bad for the health. But also if you get very angry, you are very aggressive, that's also very bad for the health of, you, of your own body, but also for the whole universe of living beings. So all kinds of negative thoughts, uh, jealousy and anger and bitterness and whatever you can come up with, that is also that is not practicing love to microcosmos. You are not practicing neighborly love to your microcosmos. So that means that this notion to practice neighborly love, Martinus has uh, given it a new definition that is very vast. So, and in the way, the planet Earth is a living being, the solar system is a living being. So also when you are polluting the nature, you are not practicing neighborly love because you are intoxicating your, your macro, your macro in, in individual, which is the planet Earth. So that is also some very important um, analysis. And Martinus, uh, in a lecture, was talking about who will be the first people on this planet Earth to get these cosmic experiences and get cosmic glimpses, where you, by your own intuition, can experience the cosmic laws and the cosmical principle of lives. He said the first people who will be that, that will be people who are trying to live according to the laws of life. And he, he divided the people into three groups, but there is some people who will have a very tough karma, and that is people who are able to go into war and who can take revenge, and, uh, and then they will have a very tough karma. But also people who don't want to go to war anymore, but if they are eating meat, they are also killing the animals, it's not good for the health, and um, maybe they're also drinking alcohol and, and smoking and, and so on, so they will also get a serious karma. But the people who are starting to become vegetarians, to live healthy, drink and eat healthy, and who are trying to practice neighborly love to the to other human beings, to to the animals and to microcosmos. Those beings will be the first to to get these cosmic in experiences. So it's worthwhile to start and and to practice these things. Martinez said that um, it was not so important to read his theories. It was in a way worthless to study the works of Martinus if you would not put his analysis into practice. The most important thing that is to practice the anal analysis. Otherwise, it would only be a kind of philosophy that you, you, you could find it interesting, but you would also lose the interest because uh, then it would be just be an interesting theory and eventually you would, you would uh, forget the interest. 
there was a woman who was very worried about, she was afraid that she would lose the interest in Martinus' analysis. And she asked Martinus, is there a risk that I can lose the interest in the cosmic analysis? And he said, as long as you are interested in practicing the analysis in everyday life, you cannot lose your interest in Martinus' cosmology. And um, um, so that, that was the purpose of the center to teach these analyses in order to, to make people look upon life with, with God's eyes. Martinus was often asked, what is all your writings about and what is all your work about and how should he explain what it was all about? But in, in, a, in a lecture that he gave here in Clint in 75, he said that the purpose of his work was to create a new world culture. To create a new world culture. So, I mean, that was uh, quite a big thing. And Martinus also explained when he was, um, when he, he was initiated, when he has his big revelation, when he got his cosmic consciousness, he was initiated over two days. And the first day, he, he had this Christ experience. And the other, the other way was um, he, he experienced uh, the golden baptism of fire. So first there was the white baptism of fire, where he experienced the Christ. And the second one was when he experienced this uh, golden aura. And uh, in the first place, he has sat down in a chair and he meditated on God. And very soon after, he saw a, a point a lighting point in the distance. And then it came nearer, and he saw it was a Christ figure. And the Christ figure came nearer and nearer. And at a certain point, this Christ figure became alive, and it continued to approach. And then it went into the body of Martinus himself. And then he saw a light going out from his own body. And then he saw the planet Earth turning around in this light coming from him himself, or this light coming from the Christ. And uh, it was a very strange vision, wasn't it? But then uh, he, he understood or figured out that actually that meant that he should become a world teacher, that he should teach Christianity for the whole world. And sometimes when you have to send a rocket out in space, you have to construct the rocket in three steps, step one, step two, step three. And in the same way to to create the perfect man, it also uh, takes three steps, which, which is um, uh, the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Third Testament. And uh, Jesus, he um, started the Christianism sort of 2,000 years ago, but people at that time, they were not so developed. They could not understand so much. He could not really make intellectual analysis. They had to have the knowledge served just as uh, stories for children. He had to make these parables and explain it in a very symbolic way in order that, that people could understand them. But now, 2,000 years later, the people, they can understand much more. And um, Jesus also talked about his second coming, that, that he would send um, the Holy Spirit. And so it would take up Jesus what he had said and give to, to mankind. And Martinus says the second coming of Christ, that Jesus, he, he um, stressed that it was a spirit that should come. And Martinus says, thinks that this spirit is spiritual science. So we should not um, concentrate so much on the person, but more on the teaching, the, the, um, the spiritual science. And in two years before he died, he, Martinus, he really stressed that, or he said that now he had the right or the power to say that his work, the Third Testament, that was the, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. So that was a quite strong um, expression. And um, he felt when he saw this planet Earth turning around in this white light, that his mission was to bring the Christianity to perfection. In Denmark, there are many people who think that the Christianism is finished. It's out. It's bankrupt. It's, it's because there are so few people in 
churches. So many people think that Christianity failed. But uh, in, 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 all, in Martina's definition, Christianity uh, is not uh, if you are believing blindly or if you are a member of some union or some sect. Christianity is a way of living. If you are practicing uh, the neighborly love just like Jesus did, then you are a Christian. So in a way, it doesn't matter if you are Buddhist or Hindu or Muslim or Green Man from Mars or whoever. If you conduct in the same way as Christ did, then you are a Christian. And for that reason, Christianity has a big, big future because everybody will become perfect human beings. A perfect human being. For, for that reason, uh, Christianity has a big uh, future. So Martinus, he uh, saw it as his mission to bring Christianity to its perfection. And then he would make a science that showed that everything that Jesus said was right. He has made a scientific Christianity or an intellectualized Christianity. So it should, uh, he could really argue, he think that Jesus spoke the truth, but he didn't argue for it. People believed that it was the truth because he could make miracles. But uh, there was also a lady who said to Martinus in a tea party, if you can move this lamp with your thought power, I will believe in your writings. But that was the old world impulse where you believed in authorities if they could make miracles. So Martinus, he refused to try to move the lamp with his thought power because he was not allowed to do that things. He said that he had cosmic consciousness and he might have been able to do these things but he, he was not allowed to do it. Providence did not allow him to use his psychic powers in any other area than writing cosmic analyses. So he, he, he was also clairvoyant. He, he could go out of his body and such things, but he felt that he was not allowed to do it. He had a special mission, and that was to write a spiritual science. He did not use his psychic abilities to find out what will happen with with this man and what was he in previous lives and so on. He was not allowed to do that. He should concentrate on making this um, spiritual science. And uh, of course Martinus, he thought when he had this initiation, how shall I, little man, be able to bring this um, intellectualized Christianity to the whole planet? So what I'm trying to come out that is that it was not enough for Martinus only to write his books. He should also make some kind of organization that could uh, propagate or initiate this new world culture. Of course, the, the kernel, the point in the new world culture is that you should behave like the Christ and neighborly love is the key. That is the main point in, in the new world culture. Sometimes Martinus said that uh, in the new world culture, you have to accept everything. And uh, there is many people that say, I cannot tolerate that. I won't tolerate that. But you have to tolerate everything. And Martino says, of course, because everything that happens is your fate and you have to accept your fate. <laughs> Whatever you think and what you're doing, your fate is as it is. But, but you have to learn to accept it without becoming irritated. Um, there was a movie, the, the Passion of Jesus Christ, by Mel Gibson. It was a movie that showed that Jesus, he was tortured uh, during nine hours before he was killed. So that was a, uh, terrible. I didn't see the movie because uh, it was so much violence, but it doesn't make, but it only makes the story better because after these nine hours of torture, Jesus, he could pray for those who tortured him and say, forgive them, they do not know what they're doing. He did not become irritated. And in a way, this is the basis of a new world culture. You shall never become angry. You shall never become irritated. You shall always accept your fate. And Martino says, you cannot just base a, start a new world culture going out to say to people, you have to accept everything. <laughs> So you have to argue, and in that way Martinus created this intellectualized Christianity. He, he argued why it's the only logical thing. And then Martinus, 
he would also create this institute and this center uh, to help to create a new world culture. And that means there would be some co-workers, they would work in the institute. And then, of course, they should try to create the new world culture, to create this loving atmosphere of neighborly love in the collaboration inside the institute. So Martinus, he was uh, very um, concerned. He, he thought a lot about how shall my work go on when, I, when I'm when i dead? And he spoke very much about a structure, the, the, um, the collaboration, his work, how should it continue? There must be some structure. And he was thinking very much about it, and he decided to write a book about it, the structure. But he would also write an introductory book with the title The Third Testament. So he did not really get the time to write this book about the structure. But then the institute had a board or a council, and then all the meetings, the last seven years, was recorded on a tape recorder. And then he asked the different members in, in the council to ask all kind of questions. If they could think of any problems that would come around, they should ask him, and he would try and, and explain him and explain the problems. So, and, and then all these uh, quotations or all what he said about it was sorted out and put into a book. And uh, um, it is the topic of the German group this year. They will study during these two weeks, they will, the international weeks, they will study this uh, structure of collaboration or co-working. I hope it also soon would appear in English. Because it's not only inspiring for organizations that they can see a, um, a good example of how you should work together. It's also very inspiring on, on the individual plane. But to put it very simple, Martinez decided that the structure after his death should be that there should be a council. There should be a board. And he said, after my death, the will of the council is my will. And he wanted all people who are working together here that they should uh, accept and uh, follow the decisions of uh, the council. And uh, he was very much uh, uh, concerned about that nobody should get too much power. So he, he did not want people to sit a lifetime in the board. He had educated the first members on the board, and he said they could sit in the board as long as they wanted, because they were especially educated by Martinus himself. But all other board members, they could only sit there for five years in the council, and then before, they might have two years before to get trained to become a member. So all in all, you could be seven years in, in the board, two years as a training and five years as a, as a member. So he... But as there is no union, it's very difficult to have democracy, because who should have the right to vote? So he decided that the people in, in, in the council, they should select the new members themselves, and only select members that could go into the, the work in a harmonious way. And it's very interesting with Martinez Cosmology and his work, everybody on the earth is welcome to take part in this work. And there is no initiation and there is no kind of degrees. All the books and the writings are published and everybody has the right to take part in the work. If, if you want to help and, and be a co-worker, everybody is welcome. But then you will start with uh, some, maybe some simple task and then you will see how, how the result would be. And if you are able to solve this task in a harmonious way, you can continue as a co-worker. And Martinus he was, um, he was very concerned about that there should be no uh, tensions, no quarrels, no discussions. And uh, as the keynote of the universe is neighborly love, he wanted to create a structure that was based on neighborly love. So if a co-worker becomes very irritated, and he says, this guy is so stupid, he's stopping the way I could do so many great things, but he's stopping me, and he gets angry with this person. So then Martinus thought, if you get angry and irritated, it's best that you're leaving. So, uh, and he said that so often, you, you couldn't hardly believe it. So, so that means that you are not excluded by the Institute, but you are excluding yourself. If you are working in the frames of the Institute and you get irritated and angry, 
you are excluding yourself. So, and it's up to you, Martina says, if you are studying the analysis and if you are interested in the analysis, you are, a, you are sort of a member, then you are a co-worker. But if there are some years you say, I'm not interested in Martinus, and you put all the Martinus books in the basement, it doesn't matter, because you can decide yourself if you want to become a co-worker or not. You are totally free to help and not to help. You are totally free to get irritated or, or to, to become inspired. So in that way, it's so ingenious the way that Martinus has made the structure. Nobody is in, initiated and nobody is thrown out. It's up to you. And Martinus uh, has written also a, a long article about criticism of his works. Um, and he, he, he made it in five different groups. And he said there were an A criticism. And there was a B criticism, C, D, E criticism. But of all those who had a criticism of his work, only A those a, there was an A criticism and B criticism. They knew about the cosmic analysis. And the first group, they were sort of able to look upon things with God's eyes. So they did not get angry. They could understand that if they had some problems, that was because that was their karma. And the intention was that you should learn something from the problems that it was God's teaching, that it was God's will. And if you in all things can see that God is present, God is teaching and you're helping God, then you can see that everything is very good. And a thing that is also very important, that is that you don't have to become impatient. Because if you know there is a providence, there is a God that is conducting the course, that is... Um, uh, sort of controlling the development of, of, of the good cause, you don't have to be impatient. You know that when God or the problem want things to be done, they will be done. But sometimes Martinus used an expression that there are co-workers who were too impatient. This is so ingenious and the analysis is so ingenious, so everybody must know about it. And, and they want to go out and make big announcements and tell people who are not interested just to propagate the analysis, just as you are doing in, in normal companies to have a bigger profit. So you have to make advertisements and go out and you can be too eager. Then Martinus used the expression that you were walking or going in front of the providence. And of course you, 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 will, um, you will get very disappointed if you are trying to go in front of the providence. You will not succeed. But if you're patient, you can just uh, wait. But this B criticism is characterized by people who are interested in Martinus' analysis, but they are very ambitious and they are very impatient. And they want to play a big role. That means they want to become a famous um, lecturer or a famous group leader, or they want to have a big position, or they want to have a job and be well paid. And, and, and then, then they have personal interests. They are not only do, they are not doing the work for the mankind or the planet Earth or for God, but they also have some egoistic motives. They are doing it because they want to play a special role themselves. And then, of course, they are very often stopped. Their way are blocked. And then, of course, you can always see that there are some specific persons that are blocking the road for you, and then they are idiots, and you are starting to, 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 to make a criticism. You get angry, you, you get irritated with them. And also, of course, People very often get irritated with the council that is the highest authority that can take all the... Martino said, even if they are taking a wrong decision, you should obey their decision because he did not want any quarrels and, and fight. You just have to accept it. And if they should make a wrong decision, that is sort of also the will of God and it is, it, it is planned in, in, in the life. Then uh, one of the members in the council asked, Yes, but what about if the very best lecturer, if there is a problem and, and uh, he, he's not satisfied with the conditions? Then Martino said, well, then you will have to go, but then we will lose our best lecturer. That doesn't matter. If, if, it's a, if, if it's a whole group of lecturers who are unsatisfied with the conditions, what then, Martinus? If they're unsatisfied, they will have to go. So, so he said that was more important to create um, a good atmosphere than to produce a result. In, in normal companies, you have to make a profit. And you have in this man, we have to have this man. He gives a lot of problems, but he takes in a lot of money for the company, so we have to have him. But Martinus, 
for the most important in other companies are to have a profit. But the most important thing for Martinez was there was a good atmosphere. And if, for example, in the council that they could not agree about it, Martinez said, it can wait. Yes, but then we will lose a lot of money. Martinez said, that doesn't matter. The most important thing is that we can agree on things and create a loving atmosphere. So that is so uncommon for normal people because they have to have a profit. They have to produce a result. But that was not the most important thing for Martinus. The most important thing was to create the good atmosphere because he knew and could understand if you create the right atmosphere, you will attract the right people. And that is more important than having a bad atmosphere and then maybe attracting ambitious people and then you are creating a bad atmosphere and then you are sort of attracting the wrong people. And that would be a bigger worse than not uh, producing a big result very, very, very uh, quickly. So, um, and that was also what is so important in the new world culture, that you have to accept everything without becoming angry and irritated. But you would say there must be a limit, there must be uh, a certain border. But Jesus showed how far you can go, even if you are tortured to death, you should be able to say, Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they are doing. So in that, that way, I think it's, uh, it, it's an ingenious structure made by Martinez. No membership, no, no um, initiations. Uh, it's open for everybody, and everybody can become a co-worker. It's just up to yourself. If you are loving the analysis, and if you want to help and give, and you are doing it for the mankind, for example... If you go to the kitchen and ask, can I peel the potatoes? They say, unfortunately, we've got enough people, so you don't have to. But then you could just go along the beach and enjoy the sun. I mean, that is no catastrophe. <laughs> but uh, if there is a person who comes and asks, can I give a lecture? If you then ask, answer, no, we have got enough lectures, we don't need your help. Then some persons are getting very angry because they don't have the right to give the uh, lecture, but I mean, you don't have to become angry because you cannot have the right to peel the potatoes. If, if the help is not needed, you should not be a, a, angry about it. And that's also the same, for example, in the teaching. If it's not needed, you should not be again angry about it. But if you turn angry, it just shows that it's, it, it's for my own sake. It's, it's because I want to play a, a role myself. But it's an ingenious structure. Each time you, when you get a, unsatisfied and angry, it's best that you're leaving. Of course, there can be some problems if you are on a salary in the institute because the institute is working with volunteers. And of course, if you're a volunteer, you should only volunteer if you are happy about helping. And if you're not happy about helping any longer, you should not volunteer any anymore. And even if there was an important work that wouldn't be done, it was better that an unsatisfied person would, would leave it because otherwise you cannot create this new um, world culture. And Martinez has foreseen that gradually there will be a, a very nice atmosphere in the institute and here at the center. And people would feel, oh, this is like a paradise. It's so wonderful to be here. Um, some five, ten years ago, there was a lot of Russian guests in the center, and many of them spoke Esperanto, and I got so many nice letters from them, and they wrote, thank you for two weeks in paradise. We did not see anybody drink alcohol, we did not see any people smoke, we did not hear anybody shouting on each other, we didn't hear any fights or quarrels, all people were nice and polite, and the sun was shining all the time. <laughs> but it was quite interesting for, to, to to have this, that, that they really felt that from they had so many problems in Russia and it was such a big misery. <laughs> but when they came here, they really felt they had come to a paradise. And that is sort of the purpose of the collaboration that, that we, we should make this atmosphere. And in a way, this center is not the center of the institute. It's the center of the mankind. It's your center. So it's also up to you to create this atmosphere in the center that, that you want. That's also sort of a, a good idea. It, it, it's, in a way, it's not the responsibility of the Institute, not alone. It's also the responsibility of all the guests so to, to create this. And Martinus has foreseen that there would also come people from different companies and so on. When they came here in the center, they would feel, oh, what a nice atmosphere. It's nice to be here. It's, it's so 
um, I'm so happy in helping here and, and uh, that would create such an atmosphere that they would want that they could have the same atmosphere in their working place. And then Martinez said that his structure of collaboration that might also become inspiring for different companies. But in a way, it's pure Christianism. It's just the way that Jesus behaved and, and how he conducted. But he has explained it in, 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 a, more, in a more logical way. So, Martinus um, would not only theoretically explain how people should explain, it would also be very important to create a good example. Martinus has talked about three things that are very important in evolution. The most important thing in the evolution is self-experience. You have to experience your karma. When you have felt all the problems, the illness and everything on your own body, you develop your feelings and your compassion and you become a more loving person. That is the most important. That's my figure. I would say 90% of the evolution is based on experience of my own karma. But then the next factor that is very important, that is the spiritual science. That is that there is a teaching that is showing you in a logical way how you should behave. And that is very important. And Martinus has written his work to contribute to the creation of a new world culture. So that is also very important to become this theoretical cosmic consciousness and get a theoretical understanding. That might be 9%, because then there's only 1% left. And that is to, be, to bring a good example. Sometimes in the study groups, I ask people why they're coming here. And sometimes you hear this story that um, there's a woman who says, there was a woman on our office. And I found that she was so loving and so kind and she was vegetarian and so on. So someday I couldn't help asking her, why are you like this? Why are you a vegetarian? Why do you behave in this way? And then she started to tell about Martinez. And I think that's the best advertisement you could give for the cosmic analysis, that you are a good example, that you are practicing the analysis. And that is sort of also the purpose of this center here and also the, the collaboration in the institute the people should be attracted because there is such a nice atmosphere and that you are bringing such a good example but of course of course i think that the cosmology is a perfect teaching but the people who are interested in the teaching are not perfect no of us is per are perfect so that that means that there will there will come a lot of problems <coughs> But Martino thought that all problems should theoretically be, be solved using this structure of collaboration. He has written so many pages about uh, pages with quotations so you can find out how to solve the, the problems in order to create, create this uh, loving atmosphere. So I hope that you will enjoy your next two weeks here in, this, in the center and that we together can contribute to this new world culture, creating a nice atmosphere in the center. Thank you for your interest. <laughs>